Hey there guys, and quick before you go asking too many questions, no, you haven't seen this video before. We have done the top 10 best Pokemon in BDSP, which was last weekend. But this time, we're doing the top 10 strongest Pokemon in the games, which is from a competitive aspect. Speaking of that, this was an interesting thing to look at. Obviously, these Pokemon are only usable in their current form in BDSP, as they won't be able to interact with any Sword and Shield Pokemon for a long while. So remember, there are some confinements here, but not too many. We're not counting legendaries and mythicals here in this video, but I think that makes it all the more interesting. So how about we go ahead and just move into this list. We're kicking things off today with Scizor, a great competitive Pokemon that gets its chance to slide right back in the top 10 best now that the Pokedex has essentially been cut right back in half after Sword and Shield. You guys already know the great pros of Scizor, a typing that's only weak to fire while also being dominant against some of the best typings out there in Psychic and Fairy. Its Technician ability makes moves like Bullet Punch and Fury Cutter hit much harder. It's a shame Dual Wing Beat didn't make its way into these remakes, because that would have been another great option on this Steel Bug. Its attack stat is a cool 130, and its defense is base 100, which allows it to tank physical hits. That typing is perfect for doing so, as not only does it have but one weakness in the fire typing, but its resistances total nine typings, from the previously mentioned Psychic and Fairy to Normal and Ice, all while boasting a complete immunity to poison types. There is even reliable recovery with Roost, and the ability to pivot with U-Turn. You want to use Knockoff? That's super good too, even if not boosted by Technician. Oh, and if you're interested in getting even stronger, run out there with Swords Dance, and you've got yourself an unstoppable cannon with this Pokemon. Scizor is only starting us off today, but if it's any indication of the rest of the list, we've got a lot of good stuff to talk about. Let's keep on rolling with some second generation power, as Tyranitar comes roaring in here at our ninth spot. Let's start with the stats. That's the best place to begin. 134 base attack, 110 defense, and 100 special defense? Forget the fact that it doesn't have great speed, T-Tar is taking hits and dishing them back out. Its ability to set up sandstorms works out pretty nice too in these games, as there are definitely a bunch of Pokemon that work well on a sand team. You can put Garchomp, Gliscor, and Steelix in a situation where the sand is storming up, and they can excel big time. And this Tyranitar works not only as a great offensive Pokemon, but one with some real utility behind it as well. It can set up Stealth Rocks too, all while turning to moves like Earthquake, Stone Edge, and Iron Head, all of which give it decent power to fight back against the typings it is weak to. That said, the biggest drawback on Tyranitar is the weaknesses it has due to its typing. It's got the same amount of resistances, but I think it's still not great that it has the weaknesses it does. That being said, it wasn't enough to detract from the straight up power Tyranitar brings into a competitive battle or its utility you're still going to be successful bringing out T-Tar. But you don't need me to convince you of that. You already know. I have spent so much time talking about this next Pokemon already that I'll try to keep this entry on this list short and sweet. Clefable isn't just the best Pokemon you can use in a playthrough of these games, but it's without a doubt one of the best competitive Pokemon out there. Its abilities, Magic Guard and Unaware, are a couple of great ones that either make Clefable only able to be damaged by direct damage, or completely ignore the stat changes of other Pokemon out in battle. Those are two seriously big time abilities in a battle, but I think Magic Guard is probably the better of the two. Its stats aren't mind-blowing by any stretch of the imagination. With 95 special attack pairing up with 95 HP and 90 special defense to headline the spread. So then we've got 60 base speed, which isn't great at all. Though Clefable defensively is able to sort of get around the issues. It can take special hits and its typing makes it vulnerable just to poison and steel types with toxic being a non-factor. 
Plus, perhaps most importantly, there is very reliable recovery in soft-boiled, afforded to Clefable. Don't sleep on that, guys. So, for attacks, Clefable is loaded in coverage like I've brought up many times over. Moonblast is, of course, the headline move. But then Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, and Ice Beam are the trifecta of desirable special coverage. And as you can see on screen, there's plenty more options too. So, you have the ability to heal yourself, smash opponents with seriously strong stab, and pick any coverage you want depending on the composition of your team in a battle. Oh, and don't forget about Calm Mind too, if you feel like setting up. There is just so much you can do with Clefable. I have really grown to like this thing even more thanks to these games. Next up on the list, we've got a favorite of mine in the electric department, the Great Magnazone. We start off with the stats. It's 130 base special attack and 115 base defense, being the two big time highlights. That special attack essentially allows Magnazone to serve as a pivoting machine with strong stabs sitting behind it. We're talking Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, and Flash Cannon. You throw some choice specs on this bad boy, and opposing Pokemon are gonna have a bad time. It's gonna be able to absolutely punish a Pokemon like Skarmory, which is for sure annoying with its defense and ability to set up hazards. How, you may ask? Well, the combo of strong electric moves and the ability Magnet Pull, which keeps steel types stuck to Magnezone like one sticky substance on another sticky substance. Look, I'm not the best with metaphors, all right? Oh, and don't forget Sturdy and Analytic, its other two abilities. They've got some sort of usage too, though I think in competitive, Magnet Pull is just the way to go. The major thing getting in Magnezone's way of being uber successful is the presence of many ground types, from Garchomp to Hippowdon to Swampert. It can't pivot away from them, and at the most can really only hit them with Flash Cannon, or potentially poison them if Toxic is a move you wish to go for. However, against a slew of other Pokemon, its ability to pivot in and out of battle with Volt Switch, and then hit for consistent damage with Thunderbolt and Flash Cannon is more than enough to justify a place on this list at number 7. Alright, it's time we close out the upper fifth of this list, and we've got our first Dragon type making an appearance, Dragonite. The OG Dragon type is a serious wall breaker that finds itself right back in the conversation among the best Pokemon with the return to Sinnoh. Its 134 base attack is among the best on the list, perhaps even the top, and 100 and both special stats gives it options. Its stats are even able to be enhanced as it has access to Dragon Dance, which can continue its path to be a broken physical attack stat and build upon a base 80 speed. It can use that speed bump too, because while it is defensive to an extent, its speed is honestly the one that got left behind. So we've talked stats, how about abilities? Multiscale and Inner Focus. Both of them pretty decent, though Multiscale is definitely better. While Inner Focus prevents that loss through Intimidate and Flinching, Multiscale is just next level good stuff. From full HP, the damage that Dragonite takes is halved. That makes it a lot easier to reliably set up with the Dragon Dance and potentially give Dragonite the push to sweep that you're looking for in a battle. Speaking of sweeping, it's not like Dragonite can do so just by setting up. It needs good moves to follow up on it. There are plenty of them. One being extreme speed to make sure you're able to definitely get a KO via priority. And another great one is Outrage for some seriously dominating stab. I want to highlight a few other moves though, like Earthquake and Waterfall, which I personally believe can be very viable on D-Knight in this take on Sinnoh. If you're so inclined, you could even run Roost for some reliable recovery, or perhaps even Defog if utility is on your mind alongside Thunder Wave. It's sort of like with T-Tar, you can either run this thing as a competitively offensive monster, or just choose the work and utility alongside a move to do damage with. Naturally, fairy types can give Dragonite a problem as well as ice types, but their weakness is that there are checks for. And all this comes down to your team's composition. Let's get this top 5 underway with the Sharp Claw Pokemon, Weavile. 
Now, Weavile is seen by many as just being a glass cannon, and I've said that a few times in the past too. It definitely doesn't have the kind of typing that lends itself towards defenses, but thankfully for it, there's a great speed stat at work here alongside its attack. We're talking 125 speed, 120 attack, you know how it goes. So, just to get this out of the way, Weavile isn't exactly well noted for its abilities. Pressure and Pickpocket may as well both be useless. So that, alongside the poor defenses, are what hold Weavile back and leave it here at only number 5. That being said though, it's still obviously great. Its attacks include Ice Shard and Icicle Crash, as well as Throat Chop and Knock Off. Now, that said, coverage isn't really what Weavile is known for either. There's some moves in there, but really it's best focusing on its stab and maybe even running something like Sword Stance to boost its power even more when Pokemon need to switch out because they can't deal with Weavile. There isn't much more to say about Weavile, but I think we can all agree it's pretty damn good. Its speed and attack dictate that, and in Sinnoh, it definitely shines through. The next Pokemon is none other than the best starter in the region, everyone's main monkey and mine, Infernape. I know I said during Clefable I was going to keep it short, but I will for sure be doing so on Infernape because it's such an obvious placement here. It's got base 104 in its attacks and 108 speed, with access to great stab moves on both ends of the offensive spectrum. You can run it with Iron Fist if you want to get a boost for Fire, Thunder, and Mach Punch, or if you just want to keep Blaze, well, I think that's a bad idea. Infernape still has some annoying weaknesses and not great defenses, which I'd say holds it back a bit and results in only a number 4 appearance today. But seriously, Infernape is just too strong and can be built in a multitude of different ways with two great typings represented. Love this thing. We enter the home stretch now, with the third place spot on this list. It's going to be none other than Rotom, but not the regular form, it's the wash form. This floating washing machine has always been good, and it's right back here as one of the absolute strongest Pokemon in BDSP's competitive battling scene. We'll start with that ability, Levitate. It's always good to have something like that on an electric type. Electros can tell you that much. Rotom Wash has just one weakness, and that is to Grass types. And quite frankly, you're often probably able to avoid any Grass types in battle. If you do happen to get attacked by a Grass type though, Rotom has 107 base defenses, so it can take hits somewhat decently. Thus it shouldn't have too hard a time taking one or two super effective hits. What about that special attack though? Well, it's base 105. And as we know, Water and Electric are two extremely special typings. It's really what you want on a Pokemon like this. And while 86 is by no means a great speed stat, it could be a lot worse, and thus can do alright as a complementary stat to the special attack. So you know that the special attack can be dominant, but what moves does Rotom Wash use to actually be dominant in battle? Well for starters, it has Hydro Pump as its exclusive move for being a water type. It follows that up with a few different electric type moves depending on what you value more. The extra power of Thunderbolt versus the extra paralysis chance with Discharge. Hell, you can even go Volt Switch for the sake of being able to pivot in and out. There isn't much else to say in the way of coverage aside from Dark Pulse and Shadow Ball, but really, I'd like to point out the nice two status moves it's got. Will-O-Wisp and Confuse Ray. Don't sleep on causing burns and confusion in battle, guys. That's it though. Rotom is just a tremendous Pokemon whether you're relying on status moves to kind of be a utility Pokemon or going all in offensively. Just try not to get in there against too many ground types. How will you ever be able to hit them with electric type moves? So what Pokemon earned the title of the penultimate spot this time around? Well, it's one I'm very happy to see back with the return to Sinnoh, Gliscor. When it didn't make the cut for Sword and Shield, I know myself and tons of others were pretty bummed out, as its great Poison Heal ability makes its big return here in BDSP. 
I don't think we can sleep on that ability returning, guys, because it's really good. We're talking a constant reliable source of healing for Gliscor while also leaving it unable to be burned, thus allowing it to use that 95 base attack on Encumbered. I know it might not sound like much, but for the most part, it's not that awful of an attack stat. You know what's really not awful on Gliscor? That defense. Base 125. That's the good stuff. While it is at the mercy of Ice-type moves, sort of like another certain Pokémon we may or may not talk about, it can take tons of physical hits. Now, with base 95 attack, you can always stand to make that better. Gliscor has access to Swords Dance, so it can improve that attack. And while Poison Heal is constantly helping it out with regaining health, it has Roost in its pool as well. If you pair those moves with Earthquake, Facade, or Knockoff, well, you're going to have a formula for possible success a good amount of the time. There's a lot of coverage too that I wouldn't really bother with, because what I mentioned already is the best way to use Gliscor. But hey, Elemental Fangs and a few decent Bug-type moves? You can't say Gliscor is lacking in coverage. All in all, Gliscor is well-deserving of this spot, and I feel will make an appearance on many teams as the competitive scene in BDSP starts to take shape over the coming weeks and months. Here we are at the end of the list, and if there was any doubt, it's Garchomp. We featured some great Pokemon on this list so far, but none of them hold a candle to Garchomp in BDSP. This outcome shouldn't be all that surprising, as despite no longer Mega Evolving, Garchomp has still remained a rather beloved and dominant option in Sword and Shield, and now once again in these games. So what can I say to justify Garchomp making an appearance here at number one? Let's start with the stats. 130 in attack and 102 speed. Now, that's incredibly solid. Now, its defenses aren't all that bad either, though a pretty big drawback to Garchomp is that times for weakness to ice types. An errant ice beam or something of that nature will always be a looming threat for the mock Pokemon, though that was definitely not enough to worry me. You can do tons with Garchomp, whether you choose to go Rocky Helmet and Rough Skin, or simply slap on a Choice Scarf and slime into your opponents at breakneck speeds. If all you care about is getting massive amounts of power, however, you can go with something like Life Orb or the Choice Band. I mean, hey, you can't get much more powerful than using items like those. We have to talk about the moves, of course, before wrapping this one up. And of course, there are plenty of good ones to bring up. Garchomp has the ability to learn Outrage and Iron Head via breeding, with the former being one of its best possible stab moves, and the latter being a great way to combat the dastardly fairy types out there. I would be completely stupid if I didn't bring up Earthquake as well, the absolute best stab move Garchomp has access to. You want coverage? Let's try Brick Brick, Shadow Claw, and Stone Edge. All of them being great moves you could probably justify running alongside Outrage and Earthquake. I don't really think Garchomp requires any more selling here. It was great in Gen 4, and it's still great in Gen 8. You can try to argue, you can try to argue with me, but damn. You can't change my mind on this one. Hey hey guys, thank you for enjoying another Mystic Umbreon video. It's exciting times for the Pokemon franchise, and I look forward to the coming months where it just keeps getting better. I want to give a huge thanks to my phenomenal team, and for the amazing art done each week by Danny the Demon. I couldn't do all of this without them. If you guys are wanting some more bite-sized Mystic Umbreon content, please check out my TikTok, where I upload daily as well as the Mystic Umbreon Shorts channel. If y'all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, it really helps us out. I think it's time to wrap this up though. I'm Mystic Umbreon, and I'll see you next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.